Hi everybody, my name is Ellen Penske, and on behalf of Packet Fusion, I want to welcome you to today's Lunch and Learn. It's part of our series of helping you see clearly in 2020. We actually developed this series because we know that today's technology landscape is dynamic and complex, and it can be challenging, especially today. So to sort through many options and to find the best fit for your needs, it's not an easy task. Today's Lunch and Learn is sponsored by Genesis. And I'm sure many of you have heard the buzz about artificial intelligence or AI. And so we're excited to have Genesis AI expert here who will talk about what AI is and how it can help you help your customers. We will be talking about how Genesis predictive engagement delivers AI powered conversation and customer experiences so your customers can stay engaged and continue towards your business desired outcome. Our presentation will be about 30 minutes with some time for questions at the end. So I ask you um, to, uh, if you have a question, you can type it in the Q&A box and we'll keep those until the end. Also, we'll be recording today's session and we will make it available to you. And lastly, I know some of you are hungry out there, but this is a lunch and learn. So we will be sending out the Uber Eats cards to the first 20 people who attended. We've been keeping track of that and uh, we'll let you know afterwards and we will send out the cards after the session. And with that, I would like to first introduce Packet Fusion CEO, Matt Bingator. With 20 plus years in the telecom industry, Matt is acknowledged as an industry leader who has a wealth of knowledge and experience. And Matt's gonna share a few comments and then I will introduce today's speaker. Go ahead, Matt. Thank you, Ellen. I appreciate it. A um, lot of familiar faces. Uh, one of our most popular attended uh, webinars to date, so uh, very exciting. Um, we got our start in the Genesis uh, uh, world about five years ago, and since then have climbed the ranks and become one of their oh, three or four um, US-based uh, gold partners, which is their highest level, so very exciting. Um, over that time, we've seen them go from a premise to a cloud customer, and that's uh, significant because a lot, of, a lot of people in the industry today who are making this transition from premise to cloud are basically taking their premise-based infrastructure and basically cloudizing it, and they're putting it in a colo, and they're basically calling it a private cloud and multi tenanting it, and everybody gets to use it. Genesis went a different route. They basically started from scratch and basically cloud native AWS hyperscaler in Amazon. That's where their offering resides. So they're basically cloud first offering, one of the only ones out there today doing this. That allows them to scale infinitely around the globe and add these future services that we're about to talk to today uh, much easier than, than everybody else. So we have one of our customers um, is 2,200 agents simultaneously logged in. So our largest customer, um, not Genesis's, but ours, doing some really cool things. And because everything's in this hyperscaler uh, architecture, we can develop, you know, chatbots, AI, all this predictive analytics, all these next generation tools and things get to be developed and get to be presented in a very quick manner and, you know, things that we couldn't do in the previous generations of premise-based architecture. So what we're going to talk about today is artificial intelligence. You hear virtual reality, augmented reality, artificial intelligence. We can talk on all those. We've decided to talk about artificial intelligence and what it can do for you guys today. So with that, we're going to hand it over to Elsinora Martinez, who has a uh, very good, and I've heard her speak many times and we should be thoroughly entertained. So uh, Elsinora, please. Thank you, Matt. Um, hello, everyone. Really excited to be here uh, and join the Packet Fusion team to talk about what Genesis is doing in the artificial intelligence space. Great. And um, with that, you know, helping modernize what is traditional call center operations and even personalize a lot of these customer experiences, you're going to hear me talk a lot about experience as a service today. So first and foremost, a couple of T and C's. This is a roadmap presentation. So I will be sharing some information, some features and services that are available today, as well as some of the features that are coming throughout the rest of the year. But I first wanna start with demystifying AI, talking about some of the AI trends that you can, you know, really shouldn't ignore and really put those in the context of the contact center space. 
AI is here to stay. I don't think I have to tell anybody that. We're seeing it in all areas of the business. IDC estimates that by 2023, this is going to be a $97 billion market. Now that's not specific to contact center. And what I hope to do today is inspire you and empower you all to take some of what's needed in AI in the contact center back to your organizations to really lobby for that share of wallet, to make sure that you can build solid business cases as to why you need to be investing AI in the contact center. And there's a couple of very, very key reasons for that. One of them being that customers expect a high degree of personalization today. And that pushes the customer data platforms and the CRM systems to be able to work very differently, to understand who the customers are and really offer them an experience that seems unique to them. So personalization is something that's really gonna drive a lot of that investment. Something else that we're seeing is the need to understand all of the different channels. You all know customers want to engage in their channel of choice, and a lot of that is still predominantly voice, but we see um, social media channels, SMS, web, and any number of other engagement channels. So being able to understand where the conversation is coming from, stitch the identity across all of these channels, and really maintain the history in that context is going to be key to being able to deliver that personalized experience. And just as important is to be able to understand and, and report on the analytics to make sure that the investment that you're making in AI is something that you're seeing the ROI, that you can optimize and automate everything that you're seeing. So all of that put together uh, really results in being able to drive the right insights for your company. Some of the trends that we're seeing, um, and this is a Forrester survey from late 2019, it's probably a little bit higher today, but we're seeing that 53% of organizations are saying that they're in the process of implementing or expanding some form of artificial intelligence. And that's great news because it means that we've passed that point of critical mass, but it also means that there's roughly 47% of companies that are still considering and or there are certain barriers to adoption. And those barriers to adoption can range from uh, security to adoption to really understanding how much of it is hype versus how much of this is, is, is reality. And one of the things that I want to talk about today is how Genesis can help you overcome some of these barriers around the way we're developing AI. So I'm going to go through these one by one. First and foremost, the way we approach AI is really built to scale. We have an entire team dedicated to looking at the data science and the model that power a lot of our AIs, the outcome probabilities, the outcome scoring, and really taking care of the optimization so that it can be automated and it can really result in robust integration. So we're doing a lot of that heavy lifting. And the way I like to message that is we're making your data AI ready. For those of you that are familiar with any of the Genesis platforms, security and stability are absolutely core to the way we develop this product. And so that is first and foremost, one of the paramounts of the way we think about bringing this to market. Around adoption, everything that we do from an AI basis is event driven. And what that means is web events, and conversation journey events, such as the length of the call, the wrap-up code, the routing mechanism, for example, can all be treated as events that trigger a specific workflow. So now you're really seeing a lot of the usability and how this can be actionable. We're also investing a lot in a design practice. And having these UX and UI designers embedded with our product teams means that we're very focused on usability. All else being equal, we want to make sure that we're looking at easy, uh, easy to deploy, easy to understand, that we're reducing the cognitive load that it takes to really understand how AI can deliver these insights and that we can get you up and running a lot faster. And then finally, on the conversational AI component of it, we're building a lot of tools in the way we look at our bots, our own native Genesis bots, as well as some of our partner bots. You may know that we partner with Google Dialogflow, Microsoft Lewis, 
uh, even IBM Watson. And so really building the services are both our native technology and our third party integrations that allow you to understand things like intent, intent switching, so that the conversation feels a lot more like you're having um, a conversation with a human agent. So why Genesis AI, and more specifically, why Genesis AI now? Um, a lot of the trends that I first kicked off are around how the abundance of data and digital transformation are really setting a much higher bar for the customer experience. But it also makes it a lot more complex. It's no longer something that's very linear. It's a workflow that can take many turns. And oftentimes where the conversation starts, it is not necessarily where the conversation ends. We see that phone is still a very important and integral part of it, but we can also see that the conversation can take a couple of different turns. So part of this is how do we help organizations unify this and how does Genesis approach it? Well, this is the piece that I, that I uh, alluded to earlier. You're going to hear us talk about experience as a service. And this is the evolution of call centers to contact centers to experience centers to be able to provide that level of personalization. And the reason being that approaching it with personalized experience is something that can build the right level of empathy with your customers and empathy will build loyalty and trust. Let me dive into that a little bit more. So the notion of experience as a service starts with the right level of engagement. It can be any number of channels. It can be, it can start with voice, but it also has the ability to messaging, social channels, any type of activity through the web. And for some of the use cases that require it, biometrics and IoT devices. Any of the data that is generated by these engagement channels, it's turned into some of those events that I mentioned earlier, the, the type of web journey events, conversation events, and custom events are of particular interest because these can be any number of custom integrations with ERP systems, retail systems, commerce, any type of integration that is necessary for your particular use case can be turned to trigger some of this event-driven orchestration. We also look at agent data and even location, uh, depending on how you're coming in through some of these engagement channels. On top of that, what we do is leveraging the power of the cloud, being able to apply a number of different AI services, uh, conversational intelligence. I, I mentioned intent detection, intent switching is really important in the context of a conversation with a chatbot understanding the 360 profile of the customer, but really going beyond the CRM and the customer data platforms to understand what are the right segments and cohorts that are gonna drive a certain level of behavior. Understanding the outcome that the customer is trying to drive to or what you would like the customer's experience to drive, uh, the right level of knowledge systems, routing, all of these are AI services that put together orchestrate the right level of personalized experience for each one of the customers. The data can be generated from the engagement channels that I mentioned, but we also have a very strong ecosystem of partners across a number of different use cases, be it sales, marketing, um, you know, unified communications, that can also contribute data to this ecosystem so that all of that can be orchestrated. What you also find here is that we believe in really partnering with um, a number of different AI providers as well. And so I mentioned a couple of the chatbots. So this is where you see some of the integrations that we have with Google and the partnerships with Google and Microsoft. So that what we want to focus in, in on as Genesis is this orchestration mechanism. And you can bring to this platform some of the existing deployments that you already have. Now, what is really experience as a service? I'm going to walk you through a couple of examples. And what I want to do is challenge you to see yourself reflected in some of these and say, well, how well are we doing with this type of experience? We call these the experience as a service imperatives. And the notions behind these are really putting all of the AI trends and the orchestration piece together. You want to know the journey that a customer has taken before they get to your agent. 
whether they come from a phone, whether they're coming in from any of the channels, you want to understand so that you don't have to go the dreaded, how may I help you? You can repeat this journey back to them. We understand that you're trying to apply for a loan. We understand that you're looking for a different plan or you would like some rates. All of that starts with a personalization experience to your particular customers. Second, you want to empathize with a situation. We want agents to be listening with the intent of understanding, not with the intent of responding. And so a lot of our agent experience is geared towards giving that really critical information and surfacing it to the agent so that they can engage with the right level of empathy for that particular use case. And that really speaks to understanding a customer before you ever met me. And that's having the context of how long they've been a customer, how many of your products or offerings did they use, how often do they engage with your agents. So all of that, again, is surfaced as the most critical information as part of our agent desktop. We want to make sure that your agents are empowered to improve any of the situations. And sometimes it's about answering the question that the customer may have, but other times it's by taking that opportunity to either upsell or cross-sell in ways that there's benefit to the customer. So it may not have been the question that they asked for, but it really is a question they needed answer. The ability to be proactive, help customers before there, there even is a problem. Some of this can be achieved through that custom events, that custom integrations that I referenced earlier. It can be things like um, having an integration to an ERP system that alerts, uh, an event that alerts you that a particular customer's phone bill has increased by 25%. So rather than then wait for the customer to reach out to you, you can proactively reach out to the customer and understand if there's a, maybe a, a temporary rate plan, something to that effect uh, that speaks to that level of proactiveness. Stay with the customers until the situation has been resolved or you understand. I mean, that speaks to some of the net promoter score uh, sometimes, uh, but really it's ensuring that the situation has had a, a good resolution for the customer. And above all, keep the data safe. Again, that's imperative to anything uh, around experience as a service. Let me spend a, you know, a, a minute here talking about orchestration and what it is that we mean by orchestration and why it's so important. So again, we'll start with everything is event driven. So whether it is uh, a PBX call or whether it's something that comes from a, a web messaging, the event is going to trigger that the customer requires some sort of an interaction. And by having that understanding of the customer, the profile, their journey, uh, all of their preferences and what the outcomes are, then what that means is you can drive a personalized path that um, is grounded in the right level of chat integration, whatever the right next best action is. In some cases, you predictively route to the right agent with the right skills, if that's really what's required. Ultimately, the goal here is that you want to drive the right level of loyalty and business outcome. Now, I want to spend a couple of minutes talking or just um, walking you through a vision setting demonstration that is, is really going to illustrate this so that you can see end to end what are all the possibilities uh, with Genesis AI. I want to introduce you to Cara. Cara is a young professional who lives in Austin. She's been living in an apartment but has started thinking about buying a house and she's a customer of a bank called Banco Dinero. She receives a notification on her phone letting her know that the bank is going to be offering 2% cash back for anybody who's looking to complete a loan application. And at this point, because she has good credit, I will add, and at this point, Point, it occurs to Kara that she probably has a higher probability of getting a loan approved if she applies through a bank that she already has an existing relationship. So she wants to click and she wants to understand a little bit more. So she follows through this uh, content offer on her mobile device and she starts logging into the application using her username and password. 
As she does this, as she starts to complete this application, it warns her that she's going to need a series of documents to actually complete this application online. And, you know, she doesn't have all of these available on a mobile device, so she decides, I'm going to click out of this and come back into it when I have the opportunity to be sitting in front of my computer. So she comes back a little bit later, goes back into the Banco de Nero website, logs in, and is very pleasantly surprised when it recognizes that she had been in the process of completing a loan application, and it even offers to bring her to where she left off. As she begins the process again, she's also notified that she's going to need a series of documents, again, putting this in front of her to make sure she's got them ready, and she starts the process of filling out the application. As this is happening, predictive engagement is working in the background without any human intervention to, to understand Cara's web journey through the Banco de Nero website. As she fills out the application, what you see is that you have this journey visualization that is alerting or that is, is running in the background that says, here is what is happening. Cara has been assigned a couple of different segments. She has a high credit score. She's an existing customer. And at this point, it's been identified that she is a mortgage prospect. As she continues to fill out some of this information, what you see is here in the bottom right-hand side, it has identified the outcome that trying to drive, which in this case is to complete the loan application. And with every single information she continues to fill in, what happens is the probability of completing that loan application continues to increase. Now, she gets to the point where she has to actually go through and upload a series of documents. This is an example of a custom event. And what's happening in the background is this can be a system like Temenos, for example, where uh, it's, it's a document management to be able to track all of these and have them ready for when the loan application, the loan officer is going to be looking at them. And so it runs through a custom workflow that runs through a checklist and the application is proceeding as it should. Now, it's time for Cara to upload an employment letter. Most of us don't really have that handy, but we know where to find one. So what Cara does at this point is that she's going to go to her HR portal for her company. Notice that what you're seeing here in the journey visualization is that there's been a break in the workflow and the likelihood of completing this application has all of a sudden dropped to very unlikely. And again, this has all happened without any human intervention. The system can automatically surface a chat for Cara to say, is this something that I can help you? And this is so critical because this is really intervening at the moment of struggle, at the moment of truth, before there can be card abandonment, or really to make sure that you're driving the right conversion rates. So this is a chat bot, says Cara, it looks like you need some help completing a loan application. So Cara starts interacting with a bot at this point. And what you see here is the workflow that has been built to drive the right type of conversation along with all of the different slots that complete Cara's profile. The bot asks Cara at this, at this time, do you have a property in mind? And really what she answers is, I'm looking for my employment letter. Okay, can I help you with that? Now, I want to draw your attention to this conversation because the bot has asked her a question, she's answered, and then she has the opportunity to think about that a little bit. And then her comment is, actually, I don't have a property in mind. Is that a problem? This is an example of intent switching. As you're moving through different turns in a chatbot, most chatbots, what you would have to start over and say, I'm sorry, you know, can you repeat the question or, or some form of, uh, can you clarify what, what you said? And what you see here is the ability to actually understand when a customer is switching intent based on the entire history of the conversation. So she continues interacting with the bot, the bot's able to answer, and she says, this is my first time doing this. And that's a trigger built in at this point because it recognizes that that means something. You want to confirm, are you a first-time buyer? And as she does so, what you'll see on the slots is that the first-time buyer is actually moved from no to yes. So throughout this process, we continue to use this information to fill out the, the profile of the customer. 
Now again, first time buyer, for anybody who's had to go through a loan application, it means something. There's a usually higher level of discounts. There's a little bit more of a white glove treatment. So at this point, what the bot does is it, it uses uh, capabilities around predictive engagement to be able to route this particular conversation to the right agent. In this case, James, who's a specialist on first time home applications. So James comes in at this point, and I want to draw your attention to the top part of the screen, which is the most information, the most important information. We see data coming from the CRM system and predictive engagement integrates with Salesforce. So a lot of that can be tied into your Salesforce uh, in, in Salesforce system. You can see the outcome that Cara was trying to complete, the home loan application, and the segments that she qualifies for. So in a very quick uh, amount of time, he can look at this information and understand who he's talking to and what the context is. It also contains some of the information. It contains the transcript of the conversation that Cara was having with the bot. And you can also see that it has a history of her uh, engagements with Banco Dinero. The web visit earlier in the day when she was looking at her mobile device, the experience, the customer journey around what she was doing on the website, and even the fact that she has completed the majority of the documents required for this pre-approval checklist. So Cara continues engaging with James, and at this point, what's happening is agent assist capabilities are taking that transcription and helping James interact with Cara, but not just in a Q&A type fashion or just a knowledge system. What you see here is a recommendation that is specifically tailored to who Cara is as a customer. In this case, the fact that she is an existing customer and her credit score makes her qualify for a customer loyalty discount. And so at this point, it isn't about generically answering questions, but having that extra level of empathy to these customers who are your trusted and loyal customers. So the conversation between the two of them will continue. And ultimately what we're seeing here is that together they're able to drive to complete the application and make sure that Cara is one step closer to her dreams of home ownership. So going back to, um, let me recap what you just saw. I fir we first showed you predictive engagement, oops. Okay, I'm mean, not sure why that the image is blank there, but just showed you predictive engagement, and that was the customer visualization that walked you through uh, what you were seeing in terms of their journey through the website. And some of the capabilities around there is the ability to have uh, content offers uh, in place, like the one you saw about the 2% cash back. I mentioned the integration with salesforce.com. Uh, we've also made available the ability to stitch the identity across a number of different channels. And that visualization that's available, not just on web events, uh, but also will be available on any type of a conversation. So the use case that you just saw once conversation and custom events, which will be available later in July, can be triggered off of any type of a conversation. So for those PBX modernization type use cases, this is absolutely critical. The second piece you saw is our ability to really drive that higher level of conversational intelligence with the chatbots. This will include any number of Q&A use cases, there's some pre-built NOU models, understanding the different intents, uh, a lot of the, uh, when the intents are important because it's one of the things that accelerates the building of the bot and, and feeling like you can accelerate delivering this. Uh, there's also capabilities that, uh, something called confusion matrix, that starts looking at how customers ask different questions. I want a car loan, I want an auto loan, I want a bike loan and really start to determine how to best build these. So there's a lot of accelerator tools that help you build these chatbots. We also talked about, it's, it's something that happens uh, behind the scenes, but I talked about predictive routing. And this type of AI routing is so critical because it starts going beyond what maybe some of the traditional routing capabilities out there around skills or bullseye or even preferred agent to really optimize both the intents that your customers and the outcomes that you're trying to drive, 
with the right skills of your agents and now you're routing to the right agent with the right skills at the right time. We've seen customers that have seen significant improvements in average handle time by uh, you know, turning on something like AI routing, which really optimizes the workforce. And then agent assist, uh, really again, the, the transcription, the real time uh, knowledge, being able to answer the questions. And there's continuous model training around this as well. So the ability to upvote, downvote makes the agents part of the entire process because they're able to contribute They've got that subject matter expertise, they're the first line of defense, and they're really able to contribute to what these knowledge articles really help the entire process. So just a you know, recap of, of some of the success and the results that we've seen with some of these, you know, on the predictive engagement side, we actually have a bank that has this very uh, similar use case around containment and, and, and the loan uh, driving to the loan application, and they've seen an increase, 4% increase in some of that conversion rate uh, by deploying predictive engagement. We've seen improvements on the voice bots around containment um, and some compliance use cases. Uh, on the predictive routing, we've seen anywhere from, you know, two and a half to 5% improvements in some of that average handle time. And if you turn that into minutes, it can result in significant savings uh, for, for a lot of these uh, different conversations. Now the vision setting demonstration walks you through uh, all four of these products end to end. They work really well together, but you know, they don't, you can start with one versus another. You know, the, the products that you saw are definitely greater than the sum of its parts, but if there's one takeaway for you is, you don't have to start with all four of them. There's an ability to build these use cases and we can work with you, we can work with Packet Fusion to help with some of those modernization discussions for you. Predictive engagement is a lead offer uh, because it can be used with different web events. Um, it will be able to deploy to a lot of these conversation journey events. So that's usually the best place to start and really easy to get going. Uh, we feel that all four of them obviously make, again, a really compelling story, um, but there are ways that depending on your use case, you may want to look at AI routing, you may want to look at agent assist. Um, the goal ultimately with all of this is to be able to connect all of the conversations, connect all of these different channels, and orchestrate these workflows in a way that it feels very personalized to each one of those customers. So let me pause here. I'm happy to take some questions. Um, I also have one of my colleagues, Dan Ara, joining us. Um, so if there's any uh, questions that are specifically, uh, you know, sales related, um, but let me just open it up. Um, I don't know if you want to read some of them from the yeah, Q&A. This, uh, this is Matt. We've been getting a couple filtering through here, so we'll try to, uh, to answer to get a couple of you guys. Pretty easy ones for you guys. Um, if I buy Genesis Cloud, do I need to buy another tool like Watson? The answer to that is no, we don't, you don't. If, like I mentioned, we have a couple of different partners that we work with, IBM Watson being one of them. So if you've already made an investment in uh, something like uh, Watson Customer Assistant, it can work through some bring your own type of strategic integration. But we do have Genesis Native and a series of partners that we would be able to, to deploy. Yeah, well, continuing on that thread, um, there's Google Dialogic flow is it flow? Dialogic flow? That's similar. Dialogue flow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dialogue flow. Excuse me. Thank you. How, how's that play into your ecosystem? So our bot strategy is a three-prong approach. Um, our own native chatbot and voice bot is called Dialogue Engine, and it's part of what I referenced here in the vision setting demonstration. But we also have two other go-to-market options or two other integrations. A couple of them fall into what we call our strategic first party integrations, and that specifically includes uh, it, um, Google Dialogflow, it includes Microsoft Lewis, it includes uh, Lex, AWS Lex, and these are all integrations that have already been built into our platform, first party integrations. 
Now we also recognize that the bot market has something like 1500 bots and growing. And there's a lot of them that fall into certain categories, either industry or verticalized. And so we do have an API model that allows you to bring any bot and connect it via our API platform so that if there are specific use cases or something that you need around a specific ontology and you find that there's a partner out there that has built such a solution, you can make use of these 30 party integrations. So again, that three prong approach um, is a notion of bring your own or use our own native technology. All right, killer. Um, third party PBX telephone platform, you know, if they have a third party PBX phone system, does machine learning work? Yeah, I mean, that's kind so of- So the a, answer to that, yeah. yeah. Well, so let I mean, me let me go back to you know, what I, I said I, around might, conversation events. This might also be part of it too, is I have a legacy PBX, my hotel, Avaya Blue, can I use AI? Right, so basically third party legacy stuff, how do you layer onto that and do what you do? Yeah. Our AI platform is built in such a way that it's very, it's a, it's a very API first type of environment uh, uh, built. And so if we can find ways to connect and take some of that information and turn it in, then everything that I talk about, turning those voice streams coming in into events, then conversation journey events, then the answer is yes, it can. Cool, cool, cool. Um... I think you've already answered this, but just kind of question to different phrase a different way. Do you guys use Cortina Siri Alexa equivalent for contact center? Our AI platform, I mean, as you said early on, is built on a lot of the AWS services, um, plus a lot of our own native. Uh, so some of the underlying services are AWS services. A lot of them are developed in house. Um, I don't know if what you mean by Siri is, do you have, um, you know, sort of that virtual assistant voice built in? Yeah, um, that's more what the question not, is. Yeah, no, not, not, not any of the Siri or the Alexa. Now, again, like I said, it's a very open platform with a very robust set of APIs. So with partners such as yourself, if that ends up being something that there's a use case for it, then I'm sure we can look at what kind of APIs we can do to make that happen. But you also do have that one, what is that? I forget is the lady's name that is your AI product that is the voice recognition, the kind of a chat bot. What was that one? Do you remember that? That, so that that's all dialogue engine now. That's dialogue engine. Okay. So you have yes. something similar to this where they're doing listening and questioning and answering back and forth, having real time voice conversations with people that you can't do stuff like this. That is absolutely right. So it can be either agent assisted through dialogue engine. It can be just the self-contained chatbot. But the use case between the chatbot and agent assist is doing a lot of taking that real time transcription, whether it be voice bots, whether it be chatbots, and somebody you know is is assisted to be able to respond. Yeah. Good. So the answer is we don't use those technologies. We use our own, and we do similar type things. Um, this is a pretty Correct. easy one. Not really. It says, I have a legacy PBX. Can I use AI? I mean, the real concept is, you know, Genesis, while they have their own internal UC offering, you know, you got your start in predominantly doing over the top contact center offerings for third party premise based PBXs. And now you also even augment cloud based UCAS solutions. So all the stuff that you guys just talked about the last 45 minutes can be layered onto a legacy premise-based PBX, and we can do certain types of integrations um, to allow the premise-based PBX to interface with the cloud offering. Is that a fair statement? That is a fair statement. I answered your question for you. Awesome. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> I, I, added, I added some value. Unbelievable. Um, you know, last one, I think, I'm, well, there's a couple more that just jumped in. Um, you know, there's a, there's a saying, and you might even have referenced this already, that 80% of AI projects fail. Is it too soon to jump in to AI? 
No, absolutely not. And, um, you know, part of my background is I spent the last many, many years in analytics. And a lot of the original big data, Hadoop data streaming all originated there. And so I've been listening to this type of stat from the analysts in in the industry for many years. And it's true. 80% of AI projects fail because they fail to look at um, the right type of data. So there's no... There's no AI without the right IA, where IA is information architecture. And it's, you know, that that's very true. And that's why a lot of companies shy away from looking at these big AI transformation projects because they think about it and what is that going to require? Is it a new type of a data warehouse or what do I need to now look at in a streaming type of event? And the, the piece that I said earlier is we make your data AI ready. And that's one of the key differentiators and why Genesis AI and why now is we can leverage what is already part of your existing operations, taking the transcription that's coming in from your PBX operation, looking at the journey that customers are taking on the web. And because every single one of those is streaming into a real time AI um, architecture, then automatically we're going to turn some of those into events and you have the right triggers. So this is not the type of an AI project where you're now going to spend three years trying to transform the data so that you can have the right insights on top of it. It has actually been built with a data schema that are going to leverage existing operations for the contact center. And that is so important um, and why this notion of we make your data AI ready is so key to bring back to your organizations because it's a radically different type of investment. Wow, that was powerful. I don't know what to say on that. It was awesome. Uh, I'm going to record that, write it down, and try to repeat it. Um, you know, I hear, you know, we're, we're in the business of integrations, of bringing things together and making it all work. And, you know, the more complexity you add to things, the longer it takes, the harder it is to do things. And you kind of mentioned it earlier, there's 50 chatbot engines out there and, you know, there's 50 different AI engines. There's all these different ways of getting up to the same goal. And I think a lot of people are having trouble when they're trying to integrate all these third parties, open API, all this craziness to go deliver something. And I think what you're trying to say is, you know, Genesis does it a little differently. They're, you know, they have all the tools in one place, all integrated together. And, and, you know, a lot of other people say they have the tools too, but personally, I say you guys actually have the know-how and the knowledge and the people um, to do it. Um, Maybe you can, maybe I already stole the thunder and answered the question for you, but maybe you can elaborate on that. Yeah, it's one of the reasons why I said, you know, this vision setting demonstration is intended to inspire you with the art of the possible. What can we do? What can be done when you put all of these together? But again, it's one of the reasons why predictive engagement is the lead offering here, because predictive engagement allows you to get started very, very quickly, regardless of where you're coming from. So if it's something that you want to start with PBX, with voice, with web messaging, um, it requires... And, you know, somebody that has the right subject matter expertise to configure, you know, through something that's already assisted, what are the segments, right? If you think back to the demo, um, you know, we we want to open a bank account. We want, you you may want to uh, complete a loan application. If there's insurance going through the bank, then you want a specific policy. And so you want to understand what your outcomes and what you're trying to drive and then the segments in your customers. But that is very easy Um, through the right design system to be able to go in and configure it. So it just requires a really good understanding of your business and and you are off to the races, knowing and understanding so much more about your customers. And, And it's really the ability to see, learn, and act. And you start seeing insights. We've seen it with our customers. You start seeing insights because you've now got this automatically deployed at with the ability to act in the moment of truth before there's a break in the workflow or before you have cart abandonment or 
you know, even with the notion of let me help you come back, you may have been distracted or, you know, life happens. And so each one of these by themselves can help with whatever it is that your specific use case is going to be. If it's a matter of you just need a better chat bot, then yeah, I mean, some of the capabilities that I mentioned around intent detection, maybe you don't even know where to start. You are looking at the universe of all of the possible things and all of the possible conversations that could come from you know your traditional uh, voice IVRs and now you have to boil this down into a bot well it's as simple as uploading you can do one of two ways leverage the transcription services and or upload um, a CSV file and that quickly you can start understanding and interpreting the different intents from your customers so because we're looking at it and we have this design team working alongside us the speed to be able to deploy this and the first time onboarding experience is very important to us to make sure that we're delivering the right experience for you. So there's a couple of things like that intent miner that I was referencing that are already built in to help you get started today. And, and along and, and along the way, you know, there's, there's those types of accelerators throughout the entire platform. Cool. Thank you. Uh, so obviously this next question comes from someone I, from, who, who has the install base, one of our customers. Um, you mentioned uh, Dialog Engine is built in, but it's also in App Foundry as part of the catalog. Is it a separate item priced separately or is it part of Genesis Cloud included in as a subscription? Part of Genesis Cloud. Well, it, it, the the reason why it's in the app foundry is because there's a couple of different ways you, you, you can, can work with a what partner the app, such as you, yourself maybe you can describe what the yeah. app foundry is for people because there's some people in here that don't yep, know. absolutely the so the app foundry is genesis marketplace uh it has a couple of our own native solutions like you see with dialogue engine the reason being you can work with a partner such as packet fusion to help you know, with the install, or if we also want to make sure that we're enabling a digital try and buy. So if you just want to click on it, try now, deploy it into your environment, the App Foundry gives you the opportunity to be a little bit more self-service. In addition, what you'll see, so that's why you'll see some of the gen native Genesis technology in App Foundry. In addition, you'll see a lot of our different partners. We've got some bot partners on there. You would see Amazon Lex, for example. We've got a couple of other agent assistant type of technology. So again, we're not shying away with giving our customers the opportunity to use some of these vendors, some of these partners, some of these applications that you're comfortable with, that you've made an investment in, or that are specifically geared towards your industry. The, the core and the value proposition of what Genesis brings is the ability to orchestrate all of this together so that you have a personalized experience. So we've built a full stack. And obviously we, we, you know, we believe that there's huge value in the full Genesis stack, but there's also some incredible um, other types of AI applications out there. And we want to make sure that you have the flexibility to use those. So again, bringing it back to the question, why is Dialog Engine on the App Foundry? Because if what you're looking for is a digital try by, you can go into the App Foundry and just do it in a self-service kind of way but you can always talk to your sales rep, you can talk to a partner. There's a couple of different ways. I mean, I think um, it really bodes to the fact that you guys are a platform, right? You're not a, you're not an art, you're an architecture, you're a system, you're a, you know, you're a contact center, but really you're a platform. You're enabling a large ecosystem to create a whole world of applications that are based on your platform to provide different services. I mean, kind of similar to the the Salesforce model where they have all these partners, all these plugins, all these cool things to do. That's what you guys have developed for the cloud-based, you know, contact center world. Fair to say? Yeah, absolutely. And if you think about how I first started, which is 
you know, the need for personalization is going to push what you consider, you know, in traditional customer data platforms or CRMs. I reference the Salesforce integration. We are looking at a, at a long roadmap of different integrations like that because we also believe that the strength of a lot of this is making sure that we've got those ERP integrations, the ticketing systems, for example, retail, and being able to holistically look at 360 degree view of the customer is what's going to drive the right level of personalization. So we're not shying away from any of the partnerships that make sense for the right type of use case. Got it. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, there's one more very particular question that I think I'll answer offline. Um, so uh, I appreciate that. Um, I know Ellen was going to say one more thing at the end. I'm going to wrap it up saying we've had a tremendous um, success with our relationship with you guys and we're continuing on doing some really cool things. And the things that my, you know, 55 person company can do and give to these large Fortune 500 customers, I couldn't do without your platform. So we are leveraging an amazing piece of technology built on the hyperscalers with open architectures and this, you know, cloud platform for this ecosystem. Like with all that, we couldn't, I wouldn't be where, Packet Fusion wouldn't be where we are today without customer, without products like yourself, which you guys are creating. So thank you on that. If any of you guys, there are, you know, 100 plus people on this, on this call, um, want more information, you have my email address, Matt Pingator mpingator at packetfusion.com. It may be matt at packetfusion.com. Both of them get to me. Um, love to follow up with anything for existing customers or net new opportunities. Um, feel free to reach out. Ellen, did you want to wrap things up? Or uh, sure. I'm sorry, uh, Elsinore, did you want to end anything? Want any final notes? I think you did a good job. But no, just Thank you, Matt. I wanted to say thank you for that. Thank you to Packet Fusion for your partnership, obviously. Um, we appreciate, uh, you know, you being such a great partner, definitely contributes to our mutual success. And uh, looking forward to all of those great PBX questions, modernization of all of those uh, workflows is really a lot of what we're trying to, to, you know, do in the next phase of AI. And so we'd be happy to work with you and Packet Fusion um, on anything related to the modernization of those workflows. Great. Thank you so much, Elsinora. Um, your your comments and your presentation definitely i think accomplished your goal of trying to inspire the art of possible and we can see by a lot of the questions that were coming in and and things that were coming up in the dialogue that happened that you definitely achieved that we very much appreciate that so again thank you very much elsa and matt and uh have a great rest of your day everyone <laughs>